Welcome to the learning square. In this series of video tutorials, I will introduce you to R, which is the most powerful programming language used by data scientists all over the world. R is a functional programming language and is an open source. We can just go to this particular site, which is r-project.org. I have CRAN here, which is a comprehensive R archive network. So there are various mirrors here for all the countries. For India, we have it at IIT Madras. You can choose the mirror that we want. Choose our OS. So if we have a Linux, Mac and Windows version, then to be able to install, we have three subdirectories, base, contribute and R tools. R tools is generally downloaded whenever we may want to make our own packages. We generally use the base and use the install R for the first time. In case you're using R for the first time, you can download this package for 32 64 bit once it's done you can just install this using the defaults and then you can install the r studio which is a very powerful ide to be used along with r so the installers are here you can download again with the defaults you can install this once this is done this is how my ide looks like once you open it it has four windows here so i'll say new project So this is the default look that I have. That's the project which we have created right now. The environmental variables are showed here. There are any kind of objects or variables which we have created at any point of time in the project. I can import data sets from this. I can clear my variables from this. This is my console wherein I can type my commands directly here and see the output here or I can use the script here. So suppose I want to run this I can just say control enter and this particular command is run here in the console to be able to clear the console I just have to do control L now here I have the files so right now I have this particular project here which is which has this file plots whatever plots I make they will be displayed here the packages tab tells me the packages available with me to be able to install a package I have to install it from here, generally use the CRAN repository, give the package name and install it here. Or I could also use the command install.package and in inverted commas I give the name of the package that I want to install. Now to be able to use an installed package, I have to load it. So I will just use this rattle here. So I have installed it once, all the dependencies also are downloaded along with it. And to be able to use it, I just load it by clicking it there and then I use rattle. Now, uh, rattle is actually a very nice GUI based data miner. So, I have various possibilities here. We will explore these later as we move on with the course. Then I have a help here. So, I can just put a question mark here and maybe I want to see about data dot frame. So, here whatever help I want it's displayed over here the description the usage the arguments the details everything is here history tells me all the commands that I have executed recently I could store the script here as an R file and load it later also so I'll just clear it using control L first starting off initially I R is very powerful mathematical tool so it's almost like a calculator here so 5 to the power 3 I can do I can do division operations multiplications remember there is no int division so I get the number as it is now 3 to the power 5 plus 1 minus 10 now all the expressions are evaluated using the Pedmas rule which is a parenthesis exponential division multiplication addition and subtraction I also have the modulus by using two percentage signs which gives me the remainder of the operation then I also have the log values so I can perform log of 2 this is to the base E I can specify the base over here and get the values the cost function for pi is returned here I can just see all the trigonometric functions available by using this now then I have the logical operations so I could check greater than equal to so it returns me a boolean value here telling me that this statement is false I can check the equality by using two equal to's 
now interestingly if I say sat is less than this it is true so you can see it works for characters also and it's followed alphabetically I can check that a function is not equal to so since 9 is equal to 5 plus 4 it returns me a false this sign is the not equal to sign then I have or operation which is a logical operation so if I have x is equal to true and y is equal to say false these are boolean variables I can check their class by looking at the value so these are lo logical variables that I have if I say x or y gives me 1 which is true x and y should give me a false because it's a logical and operation wherein both need to be true to be able to return a true value I can also see is true so since x was true it returns me a true value after these logical operations I have the variables so I generally can do the assignment using two methods I can say x has been assigned the value c is for concatenation and I give values 2 3 1 2 3 x is basically a vector of number type I can check the class of x it's a numeric vector and I have three values here 1 2 3 so this is the one way to assign the values and the other is equal to so I could have also said y is equal to this and again the similar operation happens here but the preferred way to assign is using this because R is actually a successor of S wherein the assignment was done using this. I have another way of assigning wherein I can say assign. I give the variable name here. So I say maybe A and I assign the values. So you can see A has been assigned this particular value here. So I have three ways of assignment but the most preferred way is this one. I can do multiple assignments. I can say x has been assigned y has been assigned the value 7 so you can see x y are both 7 now. now I can also remove the variables that I have here using rm and I can remove say x so you can see you can see here our x has been removed from this environment now remember r is case sensitive so if I say a has been assigned then a is different from capital A. So I have a function called is dot numeric and I give the variable name to check whether this value is numeric or not. So it returns a true if this value given here is a numeric variable which it is. Now to be able to assign integer values I have a specific format so I can say x is 5L. Wherever I say this then this value is integer. Is integer x true I can check the class of x it's an integer now now if I up multiply 4l which is an integer with a numeric value then the answer is automatically <coughs> converted to a float I do an integer division I do an integer division the value is again converted to a float so these are my data types that I have I have a numeric type I have an integer type I can have a character type so for character I can maybe just say a is and I can give it in quotes happy shake so if I want to see the class of a it's a character I can give a vector of strings here a a b b c c and when I see the class of b it's this now if I have something like this a number is also given it is automatically converted to a character here you can see the quotes are introduced in one also then we have dates here so if I want to store a date I can just say d is maybe as dot date and I can give the date 2015-01-02 so that's the year month and date if I want to check the class of d it's a date format if I display this as as dot numeric d it's going to return me the number of days since January 1st 1970 then we have logical which we've already seen stored as true and false then we have vectors data frames arrays lists and matrices which we will discuss individually in the further on lectures now this brings us to the end of introduction to R we will see the other data types in the following lectures so see you in the next lecture thank you